Hello, my name is Melanie Jacobson and I'm going to be going through the details of the Green Building Ordinance in the following slide deck. As you go through, please note down any questions that you might have and let us know how we can help you through this process. In this video, we're going to be going over three components. First, we'll perform a brief review of the Green Building Code. Then we'll jump into the Cal Green tier system and we'll also be reviewing the local amendments to the Cal Green Code. And you'll notice here on the right hand side the icon that designates the Green Building Ordinance requirements for residential projects. The overall goal for the Green Building Ordinance is to build a new generation of green buildings that focuses on the environment, health, building performance, and community. The overall scope of the Green Building and Energy Reach Code ordinances are twofold. The Green Building Ordinance is broken down into four different categories, planning and site design, water efficiency, materials, and indoor air quality. These requirements reside in Title 24, Part 11, entitled Cal Green. The policy goals of the Energy Reach Code aim to increase energy efficiency and reach zero emissions. And this resides under Title 24, Part 6 of the Energy Code. So the green requirements within Cal Green reside within the four categories mentioned, site, water, materials, and air quality. The contents of Cal Green contain several reiterations and references to other parts of the building code with green qualities. Cal Green also contains several statewide versions of common local ordinances. These include construction and demolition waste and irrigation efficiency. In regard to local amendments, Palo Alto has increased stringency over state requirements for the last five code cycles since 2008. Palo Alto has a long history of being committed to the Cal Green Code. During 2008, Palo Alto adopted the requirements as mandatory when it was a statewide voluntary program. Palo Alto also adopted the requirements during the 2010 code cycle. For the 2019 code, the effective date will be January 1, 2020. So there are three primary triggers that require projects to meet the Green Building Ordinance. The first is new construction of any size. Projects that meet that trigger must meet Cal Green mandatory plus Tier 2 requirements. The second trigger is renovations and alterations of 1,000 square feet or more. This trigger requires projects to meet Cal Green mandatory plus Tier 1 requirements. The third trigger is renovations and alterations, 999 square feet or less. In this case, it is required that the building conditioned square footage is increased. The requirements for this trigger is Cal Green mandatory. You'll notice that there are stars on the slide for the two top triggers. This indicates that a Green Building Special Inspector is required, and the Green Building Special Inspector must be selected from the City's approved list of Green Building Special Inspectors. This slide provides an overview of the mandatory and tier requirements. So for Cal Green mandatory, projects are subject to, Cal to Chapter 4 for residential projects. The provisions within this chapter are for those as applicable to the scope of work. For Tier 1, projects must meet the mandatory Tier 1 prerequisites and minimum electives in each category. Projects subject to Tier 1 must also meet the Cal Green mandatory requirements. For Tier 2, projects must meet mandatory Tier 2 prerequisites and minimum electives in each category. You'll notice on the right hand side, the Tier 1 and Tier 2 state instructions for the tiers are located in the appendix. Thank you so much for listening and good luck on your project.